Hi. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about Marion Engel's novel, Bear. So this is a Canadian adaptation of, I'd say, a mythic character more than a myth proper. Um, because there's an old Scandinavian and Baltic legend about, um, or a figure who appears in a number of legends and number of myths, about a woman who leaves human civilization and goes out into the wilderness. Um, and she stays with a bear. Uh, she has a sexual relationship with this bear. And the offspring of that relationship become great Scandinavian or Baltic heroes with uh, sort of the strength of bears, the cunning of, of human beings, etc., etc. And all of these sort of great uh, abilities. This uh, tale is about a woman named Lou who is an archivist and historian and she uh, works for an institute that inherits the house of uh, an early settler of northern Ontario uh, named Colonel Carey. Uh, so she goes up to this remote house um, to catalog the the books, the possessions, um, and to determine whether or not there's anything of historical value, particularly relating to the early history and settlement of Northern Ontario. Um, one of the things that she finds there is that the Careys have always kept a bear, and they still have a bear. Well, they there's still a bear there. The Careys are, are the last Carey who lived there is now dead. Um, and the Institute has inherited. So there's a bear there. Uh, not in the house, it's in a, it's in a, an outbuilding. But um, she develops first a friendship, a sort of uh, familiarity and affection for this bear, and then uh, they increasingly become sort of physically comfortable with one another. Uh, to the point where they're having a sexual relationship, not a, a, a penetrative sexual relationship because she's never able to bring that about, but um, they're having a, a, a type of sexual relationship. We actually get this, uh, the legend here that this, that this book is built out of, reference specifically because one of the things that um, Colonel Carey has done is left a bunch of notes about bears in his various books and things and she and Lou finds them as she's going through the books so she does find one um, that says the offspring of a woman and a bear is a hero with the strength of a bear and the cleverness of a man old Finnish legend so in this, uh, in this novel that is an adaptation of this Scandinavian and Baltic legend, we get a direct reference to that. So we have this interesting sort of uh, metafictional gesture here. But one of the things that I find really striking, um, we also... We also get some other sort of references. One of the, the main things that these notes that Carrie leaves uh, does is to uh, identify world myths about bears and stories about bears and things like this. But one of the things that is really interesting about this novel is that it puts a distinctly Canadian spin on this mythical figure because we have uh, what, what the literary critic Northrop Fry called the garrison mentality, uh, which, according to Fry, is really central to Canadian literature and Canadian identity. And essentially what this is, is a sense that the wilderness is there and threatening and it's always 
So it's always just past your doorstep. So according to his reading of Canadian literature uh, and Canadian culture, there is this sort of continuous terror of the wilderness. And we get an interesting engagement with that terror here because there are moments where Lou is simply afraid of, of this bear, but those are few and far between. We do have some sort of sinister references, um, like early on, uh, she has a memory of visiting with her parents as, when she was a child. She has a memory of sort of visiting uh, this area and uh, I think the, the phrase is something like, uh, okay, here it is. Uh, da, da, da. The skeleton of the biggest dragonfly in the world caught in a spider web in a cabin window sucked dry. So there is this sort of threateningness of uh, the, the wilderness, but it's also this sphere of self-discovery because she undergoes a transformation. And, and we get this sort of telegraphed from the beginning of the novel um, we get this sort of changeability right from the start. Um, so after the first page and a quarter, sort of reflecting on her uh, hermitness, the hermitness almost of her of her job, is sort of staying inside, working on papers, old old things, etc., etc. Um, Engel writes, Yet when the weather turned and the sun filtered into even her basement windows, when the sunbeams were laden with spring dust and the old tin ashtrays began to stink of a water of a winter of nicotine and contemplation, the flaws in her plotting and private world were made public, even to her. For although she loved old shabby things, things that had already been loved and suffered, objects with a past, when she saw that her arms were slugged pale and her fingerprints grained with old, old ink, that the detritus with which she bedizened uh, her bulletin boards was curled and valueless, when she found that her eyes could no longer focus in the light, she was always ashamed, for the image of the good life long ago stamped on her soul was quite different from this, and she suffered in contrast. So early on we have this sort of sense of discontent, this sense of seeking escape. And this is where the sort of wilderness element and the figure of the bear become existentially threatening, is that they offer an alternative to the sort of detached, aged, decrepit life that she knows. And it becomes this great temptation to stay in the woods, to stay in the wilderness, in this house, and even to become a kind of bear herself. And she actually says, quite late in the novel, um, so she, uh, she's picked up a Greek radio station on her radio, and she's gotten the bear to kind of dance with her. Uh, and the novel says, you went away. No, I won't go away, she thought to him. I won't ever go away. I shall make myself strange garments out of fur in order to stay with you in the winter. I won't ever, ever leave you. So again, we've got this... interesting balance between, on the one hand, the Scandinavian and Baltic legends of the woman who has a, a relationship with a bear and then uh, engenders a generation of heroes, but we've also got this 
garrison mentality type fear that the wilderness is destructive, fear that the woods and the world just past civilization is inherently threatening. And I think Engel is taking us into both of those components and challenging both of those components because Lou's relationship with the bear is both positive and negative. Like, she finds a degree of fulfillment in this relationship that she doesn't find with any human in her, in her, in her life. But at the same time, it's also, uh, at the end of the relationship, it's also a, a sort of profoundly empty experience where she recognizes that she hasn't found the kind of salvation she thought that she had found at uh, the sort of moments of, of greatest passion.